If those that stand on it stand up to one of them, so I thought Dan was. I have we have no chat functionality, right? No chat. It's not T. Nathan, can you hear me? Uh, with your permission, I'm going to uh, recognize and welcome you uh, as a new member of the commission at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Cool. Yep. Well, that answered my question. I just cut off my my speaker, so I wouldn't get a double, and I wanted to know if I could still hear. So go ahead and take care of that for me. I will do things to try to shorten meetings. Okay. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you, but you had, you had made a basketball move and were out the door before I could do that. So, yeah, let's do those together. Thank you. To have groups, so we have seven. So we have a form. Yep. Do you want to give everybody another minute or two? It is seven. So. We can. Oh, 
Pressing two. Oh, and Mike's not going to make it tonight. Mike. Mike. So it sounds like we're missing one. Yeah. Yeah, he's got his grandson has a soccer game. Shall we go? Okay. Uh, as it is seven o'clock, I will call this meeting of the Oconee County Planning Commission to order. Good evening and welcome to the October 19th, 2020 meeting of the Oconee County Planning Commission. We are a recommending body to the Oconee County Board of Commissioners. Decisions made tonight on rezoning requests and other issues will be forwarded to the Oconee Board of Commissioners or appropriate city council for final action. Tonight's agenda and sign-in sheets for people wishing to speak are available outside the commission chambers. Uh, if you are attending virtually and you would like to speak in favor of or in opposition to any case, please use the raise hand function on the Zoom portal and you will be recognized. First thing I'd like to do this evening is recognize and welcome a new member to the Planning Commission. Uh, Nathan Bird has joined and is representing post four. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, first order of business is approval of the minutes from the September 21st meeting. Uh, if everyone would please take a moment and review those and please suggest any changes, corrections, or modifications. If we have none, I'll take a motion. That's Brian Frost and I move we approve the minutes from last meeting. And do we have a second? This is Karen, I'll second. And I guess we'll walk the roll as quickly as we can. Uh, Brian Fosen. Uh, here. Yes. Uh, do you do you approve the motion? Oh yes, yes, I approve. Thank you. Well, I know, but I gotta ask. Mike Floyd is not here. Uh, Nathan, let's see. Nathan. Yes. Scott Green, not here. Okay. Chuck Hunt. Yes. Penny Mills. Yes. Karen Hillier. Yes. Steve Strickland. Yes. Gavin Jordan. Yes. And Bruce McPherson. Yes. Thank you. It is unanimous. Uh, the first order of new business is the report and recommendations from the nominating committee for planning commission officers. Um, Bruce, will you speak for the nominating committee, please? Uh, yes, we have uh, uh, presently one person each nominated for each of the positions. Um, they are Brad Tucker as chair and Chuck Hunt as vice chair. That was all that were submitted to us. All right, thank you, Bruce. Are there any other nominations from the floor or anyone who would like to nominate themselves to serve? In the absence of such, I'll take a motion. Uh, this is Bruce. I move that we approve the uh, two nominees, Brad Tucker for chairman, Chuck Hunt for vice chair. I'll second. Is that Penny? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. And Brian, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Nathan? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Penny? Yes. Karen? Yes. Steve? Yes. Gavin? Yes. 
and Bruce. Yes. Thank you. The motion is approved. Appreciate that. I don't have to move all my stuff now. <laughs> all right. Um, subsequent items on tonight's agenda are rezone requests and special use permits. I want to take a minute and go over the procedure that the Planning Commission follows on a rezone request or special use request. The planning, the Oconee County Planning Department staff will present their report and recommendations on each request. Public input is received from the petitioner or the petitioner's representative. Public input is received from a group representative or any individual speaking in favor of the request. Public input is then received from a group representative or any individuals speaking in opposition to the request. The petitioner or petitioner's representative is allowed an opportunity for response or clarification. After all public input, the public session will be closed. The Planning Commission will then discuss the request and may ask questions of Planning Department staff and or the petitioner. Upon a motion and a second, and after any discussion of the motion, the Planning Commission will then vote on the motion. The Commission may elect to approve, modify, place conditions on, table, or deny a motion. We ask that uh, audience members observe the following items regarding public input. Upon approaching the podium, please state your name and home address. Please direct your comments to the Planning Commission and not to the audience. When there are multiple speakers, please avoid repeating statements made by previous speakers so that there is time to hear from everyone. And we ask the audience to extend the courtesy of not applauding or commenting on any of the speakers. First, uh, first item is a landscape plan for Taylor's Iron, Rodwood Investments, LLC, tax parcel B01072B. Mr. Hare. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is uh, slightly different, uh, unusual for us. Well, this is uh, the first Bogart uh, landscape plan that we've had come before you. Um, this is required to be approved by the city council uh, with a recommendation from the planning commission. Uh, so this is the Taylor's iron landscape plan that we're currently reviewing or have reviewed in the planning department. And we bring it to you for your review and approval this evening. Um, it, it does meet the ordinance, uh, Bogart's uh, city ordinance, which is different from the UDC, uh, the unincorporated portion of the county. So this is uh, been reviewed for the Bogart code and does meet that code, but uh, their ordinance requires it come before you uh, for approval. So uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions. If you have any, the applicant's representative is here this evening. If you have any questions of him. And uh, we'll hear from the petitioner if they so choose. Um, I'm Frank Pittman with Pittman Engineering. Um, as Mr. Herring mentioned, uh, this is a landscape plan for Taylor's Iron, who is a local um, metal manufacturer, makes stairs and, and gangways. They're, they're a local Watkinsville business, building a new facility at the Oconee Gateway Industrial Park. Um, we have uh, completed a landscape plan that meets the, the city landscape code. The county planning department has reviewed it and, and found it to meet the code. And, and we request that, that you guys make a recommendation for approval. Very simple. Thank you. I'm here for any questions. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak in favor of the landscape plan? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'll close the public portion of the hearing and return to the commission. I'm going to go around the, uh, the in ascending order of post and ask for questions or comments. Brian, do you have any questions or comments? No questions. Nathan? No. Chuck? Uh, no. Penny? I just make one comment. Um, I'd recommend not planting the Leland Cypress too close together because I think often 
landscaping companies do that and they outgrow their size or their space and encroach on other plants. So that's just a recommendation. Karen? I don't have any comments or questions. Steve? No questions or comments. Gavin? Is that unmute me there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the uh, only thing I would say is in, in regards to that uh, landscape work, uh, uh, all, most of y'all, if not all of you, are aware that there's a considerable amount of wrought iron and uh, nice gate fencing that is out there. Uh, and I believe that it looks it looks like to me, from what I know, that will be planted to, to balance and go along with those fits, posts, and that kind of thing out there. So that's on that uh, adjacent property. So it just, it'll, it'll fall in line with that kind of distance. But I think it'll be a good looking project. All right, and Bruce? No comments. If there are no more questions, comments, or discussion, I'll accept the motion. I'll make a motion to approve. All right, motion by Gavin. Brian Fost and I second that motion. Thank you, Brian. And since we got you, Brian, how do you vote on the motion? Approve. And Nathan? Approve. Chuck? Approve. Penny? Approve. Karen? I'm sorry, Karen, I didn't get that. Approve. Oh, thank you. Steve? Approve. Gavin? Approve. And Bruce? Approve. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is rezone P20. Oh, excuse me. We're going to look at the motion and the special use permit request for this next property at the same time. Yes. So this is Lance, uh, excuse me, rezone P20-0173 Sapphire Properties LP tax parcel B06039 and special use permit P20-0189, same lot. Mr. Heron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you'll notice on the location map, this is located just off of um, Highway 78 Monroe Highway in this location. Um, again, uh, Monroe Highway, uh, State Route 78, next to Franklin Grove and the Standard in Hampton Valley. Uh, it's currently zoned AG. Uh, in the community village character area. And the rest request is from AG to B2 to allow for general office and a contractor's office with outdoor storage. Uh, the request is accompanied by a special use permit, uh, as Chairman mentioned, uh, P2189 for the outdoor storage. And a concurrent special exception variance has been applied for also that will go to the Board of Commissioners to waive the required 25 foot incompatible use landscape buffer. Uh, this is the site plan you have in your packets. Uh, you'll notice uh, the outdoor storage area is located approximately here. Uh, indoor storage and the contractor's offices, uh, additional office space in an existing house uh, next to the standard, which is a, a nursing uh, home care facility. And of course, the Franklin Grove uh, to, the, to the west there. Uh, representative architectural images that were submitted with the application uh, are shown here. And staff recommends uh, approval with the following conditions. Number one, that the subject property shall be rezoned to OIP uh, to be in keeping with the comprehensive plan character area for that uh, location. Number two, the proposed commercial office building shall have a minimum roof pitch of 412 in order to also to foster architectural compatibility with the adjacent development. Uh, all storage areas on the property shall be indoors. Uh, number four, development design and structure shall meet or exceed the standards indicated on the concept plan, narrative, representative architectural sketches, and other documents submitted with the zoning application and attached here too. This condition shall not construe approval of any standard that is not in conformity with the Unified Development Code. Number five, the owner at their own 
expense shall construct the improvements required by the county and public water and public waste and water services for the subject property and shall convey same to the county free of all liens. Said improvements shall include all on-site improvements and such off-site improvements as are required by the county to provide service to the subject property. Number six, at its expense, the owner shall make all right-of-way improvements and shall dedicate all rights of way which are required by the county after the county's review of the owner's development plans pursuant to the county's ordinances and regulations. All such improvements shall be shown on the preliminary site plan and site development plans for the project and no development permit shall be issued until the owner has agreed to such improvements and dedications. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, now we'll hear from the petitioner or the petitioner's representative. Uh, my name is uh, Brett Thurman. I live at 160 West Thompson Street, Bogart, Georgia, and I represent uh, Rob Scott, uh, owner of uh, Sapphire Properties LP in this uh, rezone request. Um, we would like respectfully for the uh, Planning Commission to consider our original rezone uh, from uh, proposal from AG to B2. Um, mainly because Mr. Scott's owned this property for a, a number of years. Uh, and he's relocating his business offices from uh, a neighboring county uh, to Oconee County um, so that he can sort of centralize um, where he lives and where he works because he, he lives down Ruth Jackson Road. And uh, he has an interest in trying to consolidate where he is here in the county. And his business is mainly contracting uh, residential real estate. He buys homes and, and fixes them up and resells them. Some he keeps and, and rents. Um, and um, uh, he needs the full access um, as a contracting office does and also for some outdoor storage. And while I appreciate staff's concern and, and, and uh, thought process in recommending a conditional approval to be, to be OIP, I think that eliminates his, uh, con his use for uh, some outdoor storage. I think we were very thoughtful in putting it where we did. It's totally behind the building. It's um, nestled, I mean, directly behind the building. It doesn't extend any further back on the property um, to the residential property um, that's, uh, that's on the R2 side of R2 MPD side of the property. There's a commercial piece in front, there's a dividing property line, and then there's residential behind. And we've set that uh, storage area at that line so it doesn't go back and impede upon the residential side for storage. Um, there's significant buffers, uh, evergreen buffers in place on both sides of the property. There's a 50 foot buffer already existing on the R2 MPD. Uh, it's a fully uh, developed buffer with uh, ever, both evergreen and deciduous uh, trees. And likewise, the senior living facility has at least a 10 foot buffer on their side that's fully uh, um, uh, grown up. And it has, again, deciduous and a lot of evergreen trees, mainly Leland cypresses that are full growth now. Um, the, we have in being concerned about the, the uh, area we have in our B2 rezoning, we uh, self-selected a number of uses that we were, no, we, were, we were not going to allow to be used on this property under this rezone. And that's in our original report. And it's one, two, three, four, it's five, four and a half pages long of uses that we decided would not be compatible in this location. And um, we've gone ahead and self-selected those um, so that uh, we would be um, leaving open under this B2 zoning only those only those uh, uses that we felt would match the character area. The B2 zone is compatible with the land use plan here, um, the future land use plan, and the B2 is also um, an allowable zone and under that uh, land use plan. So we feel like uh, we've done a really good job of putting together a quality building design uh, and a site design that, um, that um, is placed on the property in such a way that it, it, it has no impact on the properties on the left or the right. 
and we would uh, respectfully request that you would um, vote in favor of our rezone request of the uh, AG to B2 with the conditions that we have in our report. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And um, we have one person signed up to speak in favor of the requests, and that's Mr. Robert Scott. Would you like to please come up and tell us who you are and where you live? Yes. Good evening, uh, Robert Scott. I live at 1457 Ruth Jackson Road, just uh, very close to the um, proposed um, uh, property that we're talking about. Uh, 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 like Brett says, I've owned this property for about 10 years. We've used it as a rental. Uh, it's time to um, hopefully uh, convert it to its highest and best use of commercial. It sets next to uh, Franklin Grove, but of course, you know, I, I always think of that as commercial, at least in the front. You know, you got Fox's Pizza, all the shopping. You know, to me, it's this is commercial as commercial gets. So when, when we put this application in, we, we, didn't, we didn't really see that there would be any problem with it, you know, especially with the 50 foot buffer that's already in place. Uh, and I want to address the courtyard. Uh, so yes, I have a um, property management, real estate and a construction company. The construction company, we occasionally, it, it's the courtyard, we're going right, right behind it. We're going to fence it, six foot privacy fence. It's not going to look like what you think of a lot of places. It's going to be very small and contained. We have 6,000 square foot of warehouse space. So that's where my storage will be. But, you know, we have rentals and when you know, you get there and you, somebody leaves you a bad looking fridge, you got to put it somewhere for a little while. I don't want to put it in my building because sometimes they have cockroaches and stuff in it. I'd rather set it outside while we get ready to stage it to take it to recycling. Really, that's what we're talking about is stuff that is coming in and, and we just got to stage it there for a week or something before we get enough of them to take them to recycling. Uh, the garbage, obviously, everybody has a dumpster. So we're, we're not talking a big storage. It's nothing in the front. It's all, all directly behind. So uh, when we started, I didn't think I was really asking for that much, but I, I understand, you know, we definitely, um, you know, it, it, it could be abused by some people, but, uh, you know, I, that's, not the, that's not the intent for us. We're, we're just trying to, uh, you know, not have to bring a b bunch of nasty used stuff into our warehouse for a little bit of time before we take it to the uh, recycling or, or dump. Um, that's, that's pretty much uh, what, what I have. I uh, hope, hope you approve it. I'm looking forward to uh, moving from Clark County to Oconee. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone else in the audience or on the Zoom call that would like to speak in favor of the request? Do we have anyone in the audience or on the Zoom call who would like to speak in opposition to the request? All right, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and return the requests to the commission. Brian, do you have any questions or kind? Guy, do we want to handle these kind of as two separate pieces within the same thing? And the discussion. Talk about the rezone first. Right, the discussion can be together, but okay. when we get to the vote, there'll be, need to be separate votes. Okay. Uh, Brian, do you have any questions or comments on either the rezone request or the special use? Uh, no, no comments. All right. Nathan? Uh, no comments. Chuck? Um, I need a little clarification. Um, the application says that the fence is going to be eight foot tall is that you said six in your uh, I, I just missed I just okay missed both eight foot, even better. and then um i need a little better description of privacy fence are we going to be able to see through this fence if you've got things stored there or is this a fence that's truly going to be kind of opaque to the neighbors and so uh, forth. Well, Oconee County is very specific on the fence guidelines required for the storage area. So it's a fully opaque fence. It's built out of a certain type of material that's called out in the code. Is that not correct? And so it's it's eight feet tall and it has to meet their standard. And so you won't be able to see through it. So Guy, a question to you. So if I'm trying to visualize it, I can think of waste, uh, waste management on 15. Right. Yes. Kind of screened like that. Right. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Penny? Um, I do have a question. I want to clarify if the um, project really has a firm idea about which of these architectural designs they plan on using. There's quite a range. It goes from 
looks all, almost like colonial revival to um, downtown 1930s little southern town to uh, uh, plantation residents. Um, so I, that's just the question. Do you have an idea of which of those styles you would favor? Because it seems to me that one would be more likely to be compatible with the storage area you have in mind out back. We, um, this is Rob Scott again. Um, I, I'm the, the one that's on the bottom of the presentation that has rack properties on it. That's the one we're trying to draw up right now. We're, we're trying to do some modifications to make it look a little bit more like the commercial bank that's on the top right. Uh, with the bigger columns so kind of like the uh, i think of what we're going for kind of the new orleans looking style but I'm, I'm looking for bigger columns hopefully that that's the goal but we got to figure out how to support the weight but somewhere between the top right which says eclipse on it which is the commercial bank i believe and then um the the one that has our our, our logo on it which is what's been drawn up so far okay all right thank you yes, here Karen, do you have any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I don't. All right. Steve? No questions. Gavin? Gavin, we can't hear you. How about now? Can you hear me now? Okay. I thought you y'all were turning it on and off from and y'all from your uh, location. Uh, if if I could get uh, Mr. Herring to uh, make himself available, if the guy's not standing at the podium, I can't see. Uh, I had a couple quick questions. Um, the first has to do with adjacent property owners. Uh, guy, are those uh, lots? Uh, are they private property with uh, associations uh, in, in terms of main, maintaining the uh, existing uh, asphalt areas? Since this is going to be built right between two two developments, uh, and there's going to be cross traffic, uh, I'm just I'm just wondering: Do we have anything in there to uh, uh, where there's been a discussion with the HOAs to to deal with any maintenance? And then all parties get get together, or is it just being handled separately? Well, actually, these do not show any type of cross easements or interconnectivity at this time. Okay, and so at this time, the the access to the property from the street uh, from Highway seventy eight is going is going to be the proposed access. Yes. Okay, and uh, I noticed there are two actual old drives that are sketched there. Is it, uh, uh, looking back at the plan, the, the, I didn't catch that. The, okay, the plan, so the plan is just showing one, one access point for in and out. Okay, now I got it. All right, um, and then the last thing, just a, just a simple uh, kind of checklist in your mind, uh, guy, was a recommendation, recommendation of the, uh, Planning department uh, to go back to the B2. Uh, if you can just give us a little more uh, reason behind that uh, to give the uh, uh, both parties uh, and us the opportunity to kind of think about that. Uh, I bounce back between different uh, uh, commissions and stuff that I, I deal with. Sometimes I get, it's hard for me to keep up with all of them, but. Uh, but just generally speaking, what, what what are the issues you're concerned with if we were to grant the B2, the request to go back to B2? So staff believes that OIP is more appropriate. If you look at their list of um, identified uses that would be prohibited, the majority of those are the B2 uses. Um, they're pretty much confining themselves to an OIP office type use. Um, right. Also, in keeping with that character area, that's really, that character area is designed to be a, a neighborhood village type feel. 
And so we felt like outdoor storage was not appropriate. And the only reason to have outdoor storage or the only reason to have the B2 really was for the outdoor storage. Um, the contractor's office with indoor storage is not a problem. Um, and the uh, office space obviously would not be an issue with OIP as well. So, uh, and, and in addition to that, we had residential uses in the standard and in Franklin Grove in close proximity uh, to the proposed outdoor storage area. So we felt like those were not appropriate, um, that that use would not be appropriate next to those uses. So this is Karen. Um, Guy, I wanted to follow up on that. So why did you guys recommend for a conditional approval then of the B2 rather than uh, recommending against that and recommending that they refile for OIP? Well, we can actually condition and the board can condition uh, the zoning to a lesser zoning district if that zoning district is appropriate. So there was no need to deny the B2 uh, it can, we can approve the use um, and just with a different zoning district. Okay. <clears throat> Bruce? I have no comments. Is there any other discussion or any additional comments from the commission? If not, I accept the motion. I'm afraid I, I was looking for the list of precluded. Uh, I don't see it in my packet. I was checking the email. Yeah. Yeah. Are we still looking for a motion? Yes. Uh, I'll a motion that we approve P20-0173 with the B2 zoning and staff recommendations. All right, so to make sure we understand that, you want to approve the motion with the elimination of condition number one. Is that correct? Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, I wanted to follow the staff recommendations totally. I was looking at the wrong one. We want to move it to OPI, right? Is that right? Okay, so, so your motion is to accept or is to approve the rezone with conditions from staff. Correct. To have it as an, a re down zone to an OIP from its existing request for B2. Correct. Yep. Okay. Everybody clear on that? Do we have a second? This is Penny, I'll second. Thank you, ma'am. And Brian, your vote? Uh, approve. Nathan? Approve. Chuck? Approve. Penny? Approve. Karen? Approve. Steve? Approve. Gavin? I'm sorry, Gavin, I didn't hear you. I approve. Thank you. And Bruce. Approve. All right. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, now we need uh, any discussion on the special use request that goes along with that. And this is the special use approval for outside storage. Does anyone have any questions that are different than the ones we've already discussed? If not, I'll accept the motion. Uh, this is Chuck. I'm going to make a motion 
to approve the special use, but I want to add the condition that the um, owner understands that the fence height should be adjusted if he needs to store um, more things. Uh, so if eight foot is not going to suffice for him, I would uh, suggest that he bring a 10 foot fence to us or something like that. Guy, can I do that? Well, the, the previous motion, uh, the previous rezone, it had a condition of no outdoor storage. Use. Yes, we have to take action on that special use separately. Um, but if you approve the special use, then you're in conflict with the condition you just approved on the rezone. So, Chuck, do you want to rephrase withdraw, your motion? I withdraw or my motion. Okay. Does anyone else want to make a motion? This is Penny. I move that we approve special or deny, <laughs> approve the staff recommendation on special use case P20-0189, which is to deny the request, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We have okay. a motion to deny. Do we have a second? Steven Strickland, I'll second. All right, and to be clear, a vote of yes is to deny and a vote of no is to approve. Brian? Yes. Nathan? Yes. Chuck? I'll have to say yes. Penny? Yes. Karen? Yes. Steve? Yes. Gavin. Okay, let me make sure I'm, I'm, I'm clear here. Uh, that what we've already approved uh, was to allow the condition of the fencing and, and or to deny it. The, the motion that was um, approved was to approve the, the rezone request with conditions by staff, which means a down zone to OIP and no outdoor storage. Okay. But it will require a fence, correct? Well, if there's not any outdoor storage, why would you, why would you need yeah, it? Mr. Herring says that if there is no outdoor storage, there is no need for a fence. Okay. Uh, with that uh, with that said, uh, I, I, uh, I would say no on this. All right, and Bruce. Yes. All right. Our motion to deny passes seven to one. Next item. Next item is rezone P20-0178, Sapphire Properties LP, tax parcel C-01078. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, just off of um, Epsbridge Parkway, northern part of the county. Uh, it's located between the Coles and Walmart along Jordan Drive. It's currently zoned R2 residential uh, and is in the regional center character area. Another request again is to rezone the R2 to a B2 to allow for the development of three office buildings. This is the concept plan that you have in your package showing the three the office buildings. Um, Roughly a uh, reflective story with roughly 2,100 square foot each uh, floor, uh, 36, I think that is in the middle there. Um, they would access off of Jordan Drive, uh, with two locations, and the architectural representative images. You've seen these on uh, State Route 53, Hogmont Road. Uh, these are proposed by the applicant. And again, staff uh, recommends conditional approval. Uh, but again, rezoning this property to OIP as well, since the uses that are proposed are office uses. Um, and then again, the three other conditions that are standard conditions in place with all of our uh, rezones. Thank you. Thank you, and now we'll hear from the petitioner. Uh, my name is Brett Thurman. I live at 160 West Thompson Street, Bogart, Georgia. And I represent Rob Scott, who owns uh, Sapphire Properties and has purchased this property. Um, 
Again, we would respectfully request that you consider approving the rezone from R2 to B2, even though our use is, I guess, in planning's view, more compatible with uh, OIP zoning. Office use is, is certainly a allowable use in the B2. In this particular condition, we're sandwiched between B1 zoning on uh, one side of Jordan Drive and directly behind us, we have B2. Um, Pathway Boulevard is shown in the uh, zoning plan or in the Oconee County Planning Department's uh, um, uh, view that shows the uh, zoning areas around uh, all the parcels at Jordan Drive. There's some ag there and there's that strip of R2 that goes to the back. Quite frankly, this entire area is gonna be, uh, over time is gonna become all B1 and B2. And it just behooves my client to go ahead and you do a rezone to B2 that's certainly compatible with every parcel around it and those that are yet to be developed. And at the same time, that use, the use as office buildings is certainly totally compatible with the B2 zone. We please uh, request that you uh, make a recommendation for approval for that uh, rezoning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Robert Scott, you've signed up to speak in favor. Robert Scott, I live at 1457 Ruth Jackson Road in Bogart. Uh, I don't have much to add to Brett. I mean, to me, uh, we, we put in for B2 because everything around it's B2, it neighbors, Coles and Walmart. It doesn't get much more commercial than that. I get that Jordan is not has not been extended yet, but it's pretty clear. I mean, if you look at the uh, Parkway uh, Road, it's gonna connect to the Parkway Circle that goes around uh, by uh, um, Hobby Lobby. So it's coming. We just want to have that B2, uh, uh, you know, when, when we put in and, and we're planning right now to build those offices, but you know, my, my thought is with the COVID, we may not start building for a year. What if I get an offer and somebody wants to put a, you know, a fast food restaurant or whatever there, you know, and now they have to, and I know they have to come back, but at least then they'll know that the zoning is correct. You know, we'll be the only OIP. Uh, we will be the only OIP in about a one quarter mile square square. So I'm not sure why we would want to downgrade our lot. Thank you. All right, thank you sir. Is there anyone else in the audience or virtually who would like to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone in the audience or in the virtual meeting who would like to speak in opposition to the request? Uh, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and return to the commission. Brian, do you have any questions or comments? No questions or comments. Nathan? No questions or comments. Chuck? Uh, so, Guy, I need to go ahead and ask for your thinking again. So, because this applicant put all these excluded uh, B2, you thought it would be better that he get an OIP, but he is uh, allowing that it's we gave him a B2 and he didn't do this project might behoove him down the road. Okay. Well, yeah, the request for the B2 um, with office space was what we had, um, you know, what we had, yeah, what we had determined was, was the application for primarily for office space. There was no retail proposed. You know, it, was, it was a B2, but um, with, with showing the office uh, and the proposed buildings that were shown, uh, we felt like that was more appropriate for an OIP. Plus a B2, you know, is typically a higher commercial use that's on a four lane divided highway um, or a median type, uh, you know, a much higher density uh, traffic count location than, than back down Jordan Drive. You know, when, when you, you dive off the Eps and go down Jordan, you know, you're at a you're going to a dead end, um, and it, it just made more sense to, for that to be more of a, an office type setting. Although there is a large two large boxes next door, um, you know the office seems to fit better along that Jordan Drive, and there's no guarantee the Jordan Drive is ever going to be connected. There's quite a bit of topo between the top of Jordan and the Eskridge Parkway down the, the bottom there. So let's switch to what would be the procedure if it got to be two. Mm. And yet it was excluded because of all of the 
the other items that are in this application. Whoops. Well, then I've got a package that's mixed up because I got it. Okay. So I, I guess I had this package has this from the last. So on this one, there's there's no exclusions, uh, and so you know it kind of leaves the door open for any detail. However, the the concept plan does show office, right? And and so the concept plans are, you know, binding, and they're approved by the board. So that's what you're going to get. And or they'll have to come back. Because they are putting businesses in. Okay. Yeah. 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 Parking other than this, being across from a big box, that's not too far fetched. So I understood that, but like I said, my packet has all these exclusions, mm. so I got yeah. to that's all I need to know. Okay. Okay. Uh, no questions or comments. Yeah. Um, so a quick question then. So if um if a subsequent, uh, if if at some point um, the office buildings are not built, uh, but they were, but the property was sold to someone else, um, would they be aware that? I, I guess I'm a little confused about the downgrading of, um, and and this actually is a question related to the <laughs> the last thing that we considered as well when we downgrade to OIP, like, will it then carry OIP or will it be B2 with conditions that downgrade it to OIP? I guess I'm, I'm wondering like what the, what a buyer of this property might be aware of. And if it's kind of, if there could be uh, a situation where they would be misled into thinking that they could build something there that in fact was not going to be allowed because they would have to come back to us and get approval for it. So the approval, if um, approved by the Board of Commissioners, would be to uh, zone the property to OIP, not to B2. OK. OK, I think that, that clarifies. Steve? No questions. Gavin? Uh, no questions. Bruce. Well, I could go either way on this one, but uh, no, no questions. All right. If there are no further comments, questions, or discussion, I'll accept the motion. This is Stephen Strickland. Um, I will make a motion that we um, approve rezone case P20178 with four conditions uh, recommended by staff. All right, so we have an approval with conditions by staff. Do we have a second? This is Brian Foson, I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Brian, how do you vote? Approve. Nathan? Approve. Chuck? Approve. Penny? Approve. Karen? Approve. Steve? Approve. Gavin. Approve. Bruce. Approve. Motion passes unanimous. <clears throat> Next item is rezone P20-0175 Matthew Miller portion of tax parcel B07024UA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you'll see the location map that shows the property just outside of Bishop on Astondale Road. Uh, the parent parcel is this larger track, uh, approximately 12 acres. They're requesting to rezone a portion of that, um, about two and a half acres uh, for a single family residence. Uh, it's currently zoned AG. It is in rural places. And again, the request is to go from AG to AR to allow for the additional residential lot. And you'll notice the, the parcel size, possibly 2.2, I believe that is, uh, acres out of the total 12 acre track. Um, the architectural represented photos of the, the house proposed, and um, planning staff recommends actually.
denial of this request um, because of the lot size being uh, less than what the comprehensive plan suggests for that area in rural places. Uh, we're trying to keep between three and uh, four acres per lot in that area. Um, however, if uh, it was to be approved, we recommend the two conditions that are shown. All right, thank you, sir. And now we'll hear from the petitioner. I am uh, Matt Miller. I live at 1261 Astondale Road. The, uh, the intent of the rezoning is to take uh, the 12.75 acre larger parcel, which is in a current agricultural conservancy. By pulling that out, we can maintain the 10 and a half acre agri agricultural conservancy and then have a lot size of 2.25 acres. So if we were to go to the larger lot size, we can no longer maintain the agricultural conservancy because the minimum lot size is five acres. So the intent is to minimally impact the agricultural conservancy, leave it in its existing uh, land use while allowing us to have a separate residential parcel in which we could build a single family residence for myself, my wife, and two kids. Uh, we're gonna, uh, the, the current use is consistent with all the adjoining properties which are zoned AR. All properties along the south side of Astonville Road have lot sizes of approximately uh, one point, uh, one acre to one and a half acres, all those are zoned AR. The adjoining parcels uh, 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 to the south, they're the ones I'm talking about, they're currently zoned AR. So we would be consistent with that land use, the uh, adjoining parcels. Thank you very much. Uh, no one has signed up to speak uh, in favor. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience or? on the virtual meeting who would like to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to the request in the audience or online? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and return the item to the commission. Brian, do you have any questions or comments? No questions or comments. Nathan? No questions or comments. Chuck? I don't know if the expertise is in this room at this time. The city water currently, as far as I know, only goes to the university's property. Is that condition going to require that they go over? Or do you, do you have city water? Okay. Right. Okay. I just hadn't seen um, fire hydrants out there yet, so I didn't know how far. I knew that the university property, because I used to be a part owner of that property. Um, so you guys are already hooked in for the expense of hooking in wouldn't be that great. All right. So that was all I was checking is that one condition that they put if they actually prove it. Could you repeat what was said? We could not hear that. So, uh, Karen off mic, the uh, owner of the larger property, was clarifying. Uh, with me that the city water has already been run to the two residents that you can see in the uh, picture. Um, they are already on city water and since this one is going to be inside of that, the city water is there. I was worried that it was all the way back at the Bishop uh, City Lawn. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify. Sorry about that, Karen. We'll do better going forward. That's okay. Penny? Thank you. Um, I have a question of Guy. Isn't one of the main reasons to place a piece of property into agricultural conservancy is to prevent this kind of subdivision for residential use? Well, I, I believe, you know, especially Kuva, you know, is limited to a, uh, I think it's really two five acres like the, man, the gentleman said but also uh, if there's a 10 acre tract that's in 
um, I think it would impair or cause a, a significant um, repayment of taxes should they take out more than um, than what Cuba would allow. So, um, okay. but, you know, I think the maintenance or the maintaining of agricultural property um, and the tax incentives to do that are, are what Cuba is based upon, not so much uh, land use uh, zoning. Okay. Thank you. Steve? No questions. Gavin? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, I look at this and I, uh, I heard the gentleman speak and, uh, and it brings you back to uh, some of the uh, previous conversations we've had with other individuals and or family members that want to divide a piece of property so they can continue to live to get together and close together. And, and in this case, it's in an agricultural area. Uh, it might be different if it's closer in the town or uh, from a density standpoint. I don't think that this is going to change that much regardless of whether or not it's two and a quarter acres or five acres in the split. Uh, the advantageous part from the stand of the property owner, uh, the conservancy is simply a tax vehicle that allows them to, uh, you know, not have to pay any more taxes than necessary in an agricultural area. So I would make a motion to approve this, uh, this request. Um, I, I just, you know, just feel like that's sort of a hardship we're putting on that family out there. Uh, Gavin, if you'll give me just a minute to make sure everybody's had a chance to speak, we'll come back to that. Do you yes, have sir. any other questions? No, sir. All right, sir. Bruce? No questions. All right. Well, quickly enough, then, if there's no other discussion or questions, I'll accept the motion. I second it. This is Nathan Bird. So, Gavin, we, uh, we will accept that, that you have made a motion to approve the request with conditions. That's correct. All right. Gavin and Nathan second. Yes. Any, any discussion? All right, Brian. Uh, against. No. All right. Nathan. Yes. Chuck? Yes. Penny? No. Karen? Yes. Steve? No. Gavin? Yes. And Bruce? Yes. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, yes. And one, two, three, no, the motion passes. And that concludes the items on the agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll submit a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right, Gavin, do we have a second? Steven Strickland, I'll second. Steven Strickland, anyone opposed? Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned. I love that efficiency. <laughs> Everybody good have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night.